Incorporating single leg exercises is critically important in any balanced training regimen. And the reason is that when we are primarily putting our weight on one leg, there are muscles that help stabilize the hip called hip abductors, and they are activated more so than when we are doing two-legged exercises. So here's an example of how we use that principle incorporated in lunges. The starting position for lunges is with one foot forward and flat on the ground, and the other foot back and slightly elevated off the ground at the heel. So my heel is not touching the ground there, and most of the weight is on the ball of my foot on my back foot. So as I go down into this position, I go down very slowly. And it, it's important to keep that in mind because it'll minimize the joint impact and maximize the amount of benefit that the muscles get from this exercise. And as I go down, I go towards the point where my other knee is touching the ground. And if you can't get quite to that point, that's okay. But again, the most important thing is to go down in a slow and controlled manner. Furthermore, as I go down, one thing I'm paying attention to is the position of the front of my kneecap relative to the position of the front of my foot, and I want the kneecap to stay behind the front of the foot to control the amount of force seen by the structures in the front of the knee. As I go down, I want to make sure that the alignment of my limb is straight, so my hip, the front of my kneecap, and my foot are all lined up. I don't want to allow an inward drifting of my knee relative to my other leg, because that can be a sign of a muscle imbalance that can make athletes more prone to ACL tears. For some folks, it may be difficult to complete the lunge exercise in this position, and in that case, using a table or a chair or something to hold onto to provide a little bit more balance is not a bad idea. The primary muscles worked in this exercise are the gluteal muscles in the buttock and the quadriceps muscles on the front of the thigh. Now, this the exercise can be made more challenging for the gluteal muscles by moving the back foot forward and closer to my front foot. By doing so, and essentially, essentially maintaining the same form, with, remember, the front of my kneecap behind the front of my foot, I make this more challenging for the gluteal muscles in particular. We can further modify this exercise to increase the engagement of the hip abductor muscles and to make it more challenging in general. By placing one or both hands on a table for balance, I can lift the other leg up and go down in the same manner on a single leg. Now, this increases the level of difficulty for the muscles in the lower extremity, but particularly the hip abductors. I can also decrease the amount of surface area that I have uh, stabilizing myself on with my hand. So if I have my whole hand here, I'm using more than if I have just a finger or two fingers to help give me balance. The less I use my hands to balance, the more I require balance from my hip abductors in my buttock region, and also the more I engage the muscles in the lower leg and inside the foot itself, which help to contribute to balance. These are incredibly important in athletes, and particularly contact athletes who are undergoing motions that are sometimes unpredictable or subject to other forces or other people. We can further challenge ourselves by eliminating the use of a support, and this will maximally engage the hip abductors and the lower extremity muscles, including the foot intrinsics. So, the principles are the same. I want to keep the lower extremity alignment straight, and I want to go down in a slow and controlled manner. My foot, my other foot is entirely off the ground the entire time. It's not a bad idea to have something nearby to hold on to, just in case. If the single leg modification is too challenging, the lower extremity balance muscles and the hip abductors can still be worked by going into a similar position and potentially using one hand to balance or both hands if needed and holding a position with a slight bend in the knee. Again, using the other hand to help balance is, is not a problem. This will still help engage the balance muscles and will over time strengthen them to a point where it may be possible to do this without any support later on. As you can imagine, there are a lot of different ways to utilize this exercise in a workout. My recommendation is to do each variant about 10 to 20 reps per set and do about three sets of each. If for those working on single leg balance as we just discussed and holding the position in still, I would do that for about five to 20 seconds depending on what your body can tolerate. And I would do that about three times.